Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, this is definitely an experiment for us. We have not done this live for the public before. So, um, and we have practiced quite a bit because we want to make sure this is a good experience for you. But yeah, just be patient with us. If you see a kid pop in or a dog bark, or if we have technical difficulties, we've tried to plan for none of the above. So we'll see what happens. Um, I'm Shauna Sutcliffe from the city of Gresham. I am the residential recycling coordinator and um, I get to do a lot of fun things like share presentations on food waste prevention and recycling. Normally we would be giving this presentation live and hand out a lot of resources. And um, Jay, we're gonna try to give you all those resources virtually. Emily, do you wanna share? Yeah, can you see me? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Hi, I'm Emily. Um, I'm the AmeriCorps. I'm currently working with the City of Gresham Recycling and Solid Waste. So I am the Community Outreach Specialist and I work with the multifamilies in the Gresham area. Oops. Thank you. So we're going to go through um, a couple introduction slides and Emily and I are going to split this presentation. So what we're going to talk to you about is food waste prevention in your home today. And do um, you want to flip to the next? Oh, I think it, it's going. It's flipping yeah, sorry. It was just a little bit laggy there, so I re-uploaded re it there. Okay. That's okay. Um, so food waste prevention in your home. We're going to frame the issues for you first. Emily's going to really do that. And then I'm going to come and back her up with, okay, we just framed all these depressing issues. And now we're gonna talk about what we can do about them. And then as we go through what we can do, we'll talk about the tools that you have access to. And um, we're going to also try to engage you through some fun polls and questions and answers. Throughout the presentation, if you have questions, you'll notice that there's two different options for you at the probably the bottom of your Zoom screen. One says Q&A and one says chat and you might see a little box that says more with three dots and that's where the chat lives if it's covered up. Please don't use the Q&A function, use the chat function because the Q&A function is less interactive and doesn't pop up live for us. If you use the chat function, go over to your chat box right now and check this out. I want you to look where you can type and at the bottom you have a drop down of who you can type to. So you should be able to choose all panelists, all panelists and attendees, and maybe even specific people in the webinar. Um, when you come in, your choice is automatically just all panelists. So if you want other people to see your question, go ahead and choose all panelists and attendees. And if that makes sense and no one has any objections, I think we'll start, but please make sure to chime in when you do have questions. I think that's it for me. Emily, you wanna go? Nice to meet you all, virtually. Yes, I can definitely take it from here. So um, I'm going to play this video and it's not going to have sound because it wasn't syncing very well, um, but we can go through that. And I'm gonna narrate a little bit here. This is the story of a strawberry as written by the NRDC, the National Refor Resources Defense Council. They have a really great website called Save the Food. And they wanted to give you the story of food from food's perspective. So you have the strawberry, it was grown, it was packaged. Now it's showing the transport. And the strawberry meets the lime. And this is where the strawberry falls in love with the lime. A great love story. <laughs> Goes to the grocery store and gets set out, lo and behold, next to the limes. Woohoo! <laughs> a little girl is begging for the strawberries. So they buy the strawberries, bag them up, take them home. and they set them in the fridge. She's gonna have a strawberry, so she washes the whole thing and puts them back. And you can see what's happening to them now. Mm 
and they're playing really sad music right now and the strawberries are like really sad. And that's the story of the strawberry. <laughs> and there's more videos on that website right there, savethefood.com. Remember to close out YouTube before it starts playing. Okay. <laughs> it might start playing another video. Perfect. All right. Um, so when we talk about um, our produce and everything that goes into, you know, getting getting it from the farms to our tables, uh, there are a lot of resources that are used. Uh, and the video mentioned at the end there, uh, land, water, energy, time, labor, love. So it's it's a pretty big picture from, you know, where it starts to when it gets to your plate. All right. So why is our food important? So for all of us, we do need food to live. <laughs> so other than being sustenance, um, it does connect us to our families and our cultures. So food can be a really big connecting element when, when people interact. Um, and, uh, you know, other, and to be healthy, we do need to make good food choices. So not only are the types of food that, that we're using important, but, you know, how we're using them and, and who, we're, who we're using these, these items with. Uh, so we do spend a lot of money on food because our families need us to. Uh, but when thinking about food waste, it's, it's good to think about how some families can't always buy the kind of food that they want to. Um, and some families don't even know where many of their meals may come from or will be coming from. So continue on here. So why is our food waste important? So, you know, other than, than the resources all along the way and then uh, you know, the food itself being wasted, uh, when food does get wasted, we pay in the form of social, economic, and environmental impacts. So we do this in inadvertently contributing to hunger and inequality in our communities. Um, and we'll talk kind of about, about what that looks like um, in a little bit. Uh, when we waste money, so all of this does translate into money one way or another. Uh, and then when we do create environmental impacts by unnecessarily using, using valuable resources, so that land, that water. Alrighty. All right, so talking kind of about um, the social impacts and what that looks like in terms of food insecurity. So those individuals or the families who might not always know where their next meal is going to be coming from. And so uh, even as most of us are wasting food, uh, one in six Americans isn't sure where their next meal is coming from. And looking at it from, from the perspective of Oregon, uh, more than half a million people are experiencing food insecurity. So, you know, whether you know it or not, you probably do know someone who is worried about having enough food to eat. And then when we go on to look at the um, economic um, impacts of this, uh, Many of them, like I said, many of the wasted resources do translate into money one way or another. So middle income families in the U.S. typically spend about 13% of their household budget on food, uh, while low income families spend about 36% of their income on food. And these percentages are coming from the EPA. Um, so yeah, so spending one third of your, of your entire budget on food seems like it could become pretty taxing uh, and um, and it does show that food can be expensive. So, yeah, and as we have learned, a, a lot does go in into the food getting to our table. Right. And then when we're talking about the environmental impacts, so to put into perspective how, how the resources are wasted and, and what the effects of that looks like, um, so in, in, yeah, in addition to the impacts of our finan finances and the social impacts, um, we mentioned that uh, water is also being wasted. So when we're looking at the amount of water, one quarter of our fresh water supplies go to produce food that is never eaten. Um, and this is particularly shocking given that most of our food is grown in California, which is continuing to experience, you know, drought, statewide drought, been happening for a few years now. Um, and not, not only are we wasting tremendous amounts of water when food is allowed to rot in landfills, like in the photo shown here, with the methane label there, 
um, it does create methane. And so methane is a greenhouse gas that is 25, time, uh, 25 times more potent than carbon dioxide. Um, so when we're thinking about like compost especially, it's, it's good to compost things like scraps, so like banana peels and eggshells, um, but what we want to make sure we're not composting is food that is meant to be eaten. So if you turn food that's leftovers into food waste and, you know, even if it's being composted, it's really not the best use of that food because it's going to release methane one way or another and it really could have just been, been eaten. You're just making, yeah, expensive compost. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I do like to say, you know, I do my best, but, it, you know, it takes a lot to completely take out the food waste element. So we'll, we'll talk about kind of some methods for combating that a little bit later. Alrighty. And then to put it into a perspective of like, you know, a family of four on average. So when we take a look at the financial implications for these families, um, the average family of four would waste about uh, 15, oh, fifteen hundred dollars per year um, and I did have a poll there but <laughs> looks like we're not doing that right now but um, so when you look at um, the estimation of American families and what they themselves are throwing away um, it's about 20 percent of all the food they buy so that would be like going to the store um, buying five bags of groceries and then leaving one bag in the in the parking lot before you can't even came home so, you know, and that's kind of crazy because you'd never actually, you know, leave a bag of groceries in the parking lot. And I'm sure, you know, many families can think of a different use for $1,500 per year. So, and then when we're looking at how food waste is broken down, um, the majority of food waste being produced is coming from American households, or coming from households. So, um, American households are directly responsible for more wasted food than the farmers, than the markets, or any other part of the food supply chain. So, so yeah, that's a pretty big percentage, and, and that does equate to about 63 million tons of food waste produced. Alrighty, so I'm going to do a poll here. So why do we waste food? Um, give me one moment. All right, so this poll is going to be asking, um, how does food get wasted at home? And if, if people kind of want to take a look and see. Let's give the poll about another 10 seconds so we can try to get all the votes in. Yeah, everybody in. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So it looks like everyone's entered. So yeah, and went bad before I could cook it is definitely one of those big things. It looks like, you know, everybody kind of experiences a little bit of everything, but yeah, that's definitely an issue we see a lot. Um, so I'm going to kind of talk about reasons um, why food might get rejected and then and then we will go into um, resources to help reduce that food waste. So um, why do we waste food? So before it even gets to our homes and, and you know, before it gets to our tables, um, food is wasted at every stage of its life from from the point of its where it's grown to us. So at the farm, some food is never even harvested. So if if it's too big, too small, um, if it doesn't look the right shape, or if it's cosmetically challenged, as we call it, it'll get rejected from the get-go. So a lot of the times food is either left in the fields to rot, or left like corn will be left on the stalk to rot. So there's, um, there's you know, food being even thrown out at the beginning of the process. Um, and then even from there, if you look at like transportation or when it's going through the packaging facilities, 
food can fall off trucks, get smushed, packaging can damage items. Uh, and then, and then even then, once it gets to the grocery stores, um, they might even throw it out if it's um, if it's past a date or if if the grocery store doesn't like how it looks either. So, and and we will talk also about um, about dates as well because those can be kind of misleading. So, and then yeah, and then so we did that poll about how food get does get wasted at home. So. Um, th there are many reasons why families might might uh, waste food. You know, if you got kiddos who are picky eaters, there's cooking accidents, um, all kinds of things happen. Prepare too much for a party. Um, but what we just we what what we like to look at is um, kind of how people can keep in mind their own their own ways that they waste food. Because I know we all we each have individual habits, or maybe there's a particular food we waste often and and that's where some of our resources are really going to come into play and, and help everybody out with trying to reduce that so the next slides here Ooh, let's see uh, i'm going to stop sharing and we're going to take a little second here um, if anyone needs to ask any questions yeah we're going to pause here while i um get into my part of the presentation and just to allow um kind of the issues to sink in. And if you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand or use the chat function. And um, I don't know if we shared the poll results. And also I accidentally wrote the poll to only, to say it was multiple choice and then only give you one choice. So I apologize, that was my bad. A couple of people chimed in about that. <laughs> Are you sharing the poll results now? Yes, that should okay. be, that should be what everyone There we says. go. So hopefully you all can see the results from all of the attendees. Cool. Okay. Fabulous. All right. Um, we'll continue on. If you have any um, questions as we go, use the chat function. And I'm going to start sharing my screen. You guys can see in a moment. Oh, let me also open my notes so you're going to see me move stuff around. Hold on. All right. Can you guys see the screen that says we don't have to waste food at the top of it? Fabulous. It looks like um, it's your desktop. It's my desktop? Okay. Let me fix the share here. Bear with me. It gives me the option of what to share. Thanks for being patient, you guys. This is how you know that we're not humans and this isn't recorded. <laughs> okay, so let me pull up the right thing. This one. and share that screen. All right, now can you see the screen that says we don't have to waste food at the top? Yes, that looks good. Okay, fabulous. All right, thanks for helping and chiming in, Emily. So um, I think we just had one more attendee join us. Um, Emily, if you wanna monitor the chat for questions while I talk, and then for our new attendee, if you have any questions, just use the chat function down at the bottom of your control. So we do not have to waste food. In one of Emily's slides, you saw some data, and that research was done by the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. A couple of years ago, about 10, they did a major study on food waste. They wanted to see who was wasting food, why, and where it was happening. And they found that food was being wasted on every level, right? The farm, the store, at restaurants, and at homes but homes by far had the largest share of food waste. Of all the food wasted in the country, 43% of it was wasted at the home level. So we have a lot of impact if we're gonna save food longer and help reduce the um, environmental effects and the social effects. And 
in order to look at how to prevent food waste, we went back a little bit and studied some things that were sort of pre-1970s because we're wasting 50% more now than we did in the 1970s. To look at it another way, a study found in 1987 found that Americans who lived during the Great Depression and World War II wasted 50% less food than other Americans. This was a study done by the NRDC. So we clearly have a lot to learn from our elders. So this picture just depicts a few ways you can use food you might otherwise throw away. You can freeze the brown bananas to make into banana pops or banana bread. You can use veggie scraps to make veggie stock. And this is stuff that you wouldn't cook, right? The ends of the celery, the carrot peels, the peels of the onions, um, all of the things that you like peel away and cut away from your veggies when you're cooking those veggies. Um, and then we found this recipe about 10 ways to use buttermilk and sour milk. And I'm pretty sure that 100% of the people I know throw away their sour milk when it's sour. So it's just something to think about how we envision food waste um, and what we're doing with it. So I think I'm gonna launch a poll. And I went in and changed this to multiple choice. Can you guys see poll question number three? How do you already prevent food waste in your home? No, I have to hit launch polling. Thank you, Sandy. Now can you guys see it? <laughs> yes. This is why I like to interact. I'm like, who, can you see it? Am I doing it right? All right, imagine there's Jeopardy music playing in the background. Do, 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 do. Oh, that might be copyrighted. I shouldn't do that. <laughs> and we're gonna wait until at least 80% of the votes come in or 45 seconds, whichever happens sooner. So bear with us. Awesome, most of the boats floating in now. Perfect, we got 100% of the boats in. I'm gonna share those results with y'all. Here you go. So 30% of you said you compost at home. 75% of you said you store food correctly. Yes, that's awesome. 50% said you freeze a lot. 25% makes casserole soups and smoothies. 50% eats everything, 13% said nothing yet. Fabulous, so this tells me what y'all's learning curve is and what I can share with you. And I gotta throw in too that that compost option was definitely a trick question because as Emily framed in the beginning, making compost from food you could have otherwise eaten is just a really expensive compost. It doesn't have to be done. I'm gonna stop sharing these results. And I'm going to start talking about solutions, all right? So these are solutions that we framed with a program called Eat Smart, Waste Less. And I'm, I'm notating the website on most of these slides. It's eatsmartwasteless.com, and this one is slash shop. So if we were in person, we would be handing you all these really cool resources, like a paper shopping pad, um, but we're not there. So this is something you can download from the website, or obviously you can use a piece of paper or you can use a shopping app. The reason why I like the shopping apps is because you can share them with your whole family. So your whole family can download this app and add to it, and then you don't have to ask everybody what they need before you go to the store or um, send a text to everybody and hope you didn't forget anything. So it's just, it's updating in real time. And of course, if your kid puts, you know, they want Hostess cupcakes on there, you can completely ignore that, but it's a useful tool other than that. So the reason why shopping um, with a list helps prevent food waste is because it makes shifts in how you buy, prepare, store, and eat food. So before you go to the store, try making a meal plan first. This is important because you have to do this before you go to the store. If you make a meal plan while you're in the store, say you want to make tacos, spaghetti, and stir fry, what you're going to do is you're going to try to remember what ingredients you have at home and then buy everything that you think you need. And then when you get home, you probably realize you already had five to ten of those ingredients that you bought. So you're making your meal plan at home and shopping from your fridge and your pantry first. 
So you know you wanna make those three meals, tacos, spaghetti, and stir fry. So do you have pasta, noodles, and veggies? Yes, but you need everything else. So that's what you make your list from. That's just an example of how you can shop at home first. Also, shopping while you're hungry leads to very unsmart shopping. People spend up to 40% more on impulse purchases when they're shopping without a list. So yeah, don't shop hungry. <laughs> um, another strategy that we used to encourage to buy less was to buy food more often. And we're definitely not encouraging anyone to go to the grocery store more often right now. So if you are wanting to buy more often, see if you can get delivery. But right now, what we're really encouraging folks is to just reduce their exposure and buy their meals as, uh, as little as possible, get as much as you can, so you reduce your trips to the store, but store them properly so that they stay fresh longest. So next we're gonna talk about storage, and that's smart shopping. So storage, this is the big one. So when the EPA did their study, they found that most of the food that was wasted, I forget what percentage it was, was produce. And they asked people why, and they got some anecdotal reasons, like I tried to eat really healthy, but then the produce went bad. Um, or I didn't know how to store it and it went bad, or I can never eat it fast enough. So a lot of this means that we're just not storing it properly or we're buying too much and then we, we're not freezing it in time. So once you bring your food home from the store, you wanna make sure it's fresh when you want it. So the smart storage will give you guidelines to make food stay fresher, taste better, and last longer. And this is all notated on the website, eatsmartwasteless.com slash store. And we're gonna open up that website at the end of this and go through a really cool tool, the A through Z storage guide. So with the A through Z storage guide, you can find out how to store everything from apples to zucchini and then how to freeze them if you need to. And it's not just for produce, it's for beans, it's for bread, it's for meats. So um, there's just a lot of resources on that website. And let me see if I missed anything. Expiration dates. That's a big one. There's a lot of confusion around expiration dates and I want to try to clarify them. We were told by our food producers that our food would go bad after the date they put on it. And that is just not true. Food producers are making their best guess at when food might go bad or when it might taste its best. The FDA doesn't regulate any expiration dates of any kind except for baby formula. So any date you see on your food package was put there by the producer to encourage you to consume it by that date and if it was not consumed to throw it out and buy some more from them. So think about that when you're smelling your milk and checking your lunch meat. You wanna use your senses, look, touch, smell, use caution, especially with meat and dairy. Um, but with things like eggs and produce, please don't just follow those expiration dates without asking questions. Um, let me see if I miss anything else. Check out the picture of our freezer there on the right. This is a pretty packed freezer. Everything is labeled though. So we know what, because once you put things in the freezer, as we all know, they might not disappear and you might not know what they are. So if you label them, it makes it easier for you to find them and then easier for you to use them. All right, smart storage. So here's our kitchen. Um, we are going to ask some questions and I want you all to try to use the chat function to answer. I'm gonna to try to remember which order I brought this produce in. So what part of the kitchen do you think I should store the apples in? I'd like everybody to take a couple seconds to look at the kitchen and tell me where the apples should go. So use your chat function to make your guesses. We don't have a poll. Okay, cool, there's some answers coming in. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, I put my apple in the bowl. And here's my caveat. I'm going to put this apple by itself with only other apples. 
because apples emit a gas called ethylene gas, bananas and pears and onions do this too, to make other produce go bad. So if apples are in the bowl by itself, they'll stay fresh for a pretty long time. However, if you wanna keep apples fresh indefinitely, they can last forever in the refrigerator. So some of you said fridge, some of you said counter, both of you were right. I just happened to put my apple in the bowl. Okay, <laughs> the next one, I think the next one that I brought in was onions. So why don't y'all take a look at the picture of this kitchen and guess in the chat box where we should store that onion. Couple guesses coming in, Greg says on the counter. Sandy says on the counter, someone says in the cabinet, someone says in the fridge. All right, so let's see where I put my, my onion. Oh, that's the banana. I already talked about the banana. Here's the onion. <laughs> This is fun, sorry you guys, I forgot about the banana. So I put the onion in the cabinet. I think Sharetta Butcher said, guess the cabinet. So onions really like to be in a cool, dark place. They need to be in the dark. And, you, and I think the best place to put onions is in a paper bag in that cabinet. So you could technically put it in the fridge if you put it in a paper bag. However, because there's a certain amount of condensation in the fridge, that onion's gonna last longer in the cabinet in a paper bag. So cool dark place for the onions. All right, so the two more things. I've got lettuce. Where do y'all think we should store lettuce? Notice there's two different drawers in the fridge and one says high humidity and one says low humidity and there's a bunch of different places. So let's guess where lettuce should be stored. Greg says high humidity drawer. Sandy says low humidity drawer. Lee says low. Let me let a couple more guesses come in. Shauna, what do you think about a half cut onion? Um, you know, I think a half cut onion should go in the fridge. That's a great question. Once it's cut open. And, you, and it should be in a sealed container, like a Ziploc bag or a, uh, like a Ziploc um, to go container. Okay, we've got a lot of guesses for low humidity drawers and one for high humidity. Let's bring that lettuce in, see where it goes. So lettuce needs to be in the high humidity drawer. Greg was right. So, and actually Greg took this class yesterday, so he was cheating. So <laughs> things that wilt, like leafy greens, herbs, broccoli, and berries should go in the high humidity drawer because it, it's sensitive to moisture loss. So it'll keep that moisture as much as possible to keep them fresh as long as possible. So look at your humidity drawers, your two produce drawers. You might not know that they usually have controls or they might, are, they might be labeled low and high. So check out your produce and make sure you're putting it in the right place. Let me talk about the low humidity drawer for a second. Um, produce not sensitive to moisture goes in the low humidity drawer. Apples, avocados, pears, melon. Make sure you're separating your apples and pears from other thing. A brown paper bag will do it or like a glass container is my favorite way. All right, this is a tough one, you guys. This last one is milk. What is the best place to store milk to keep it the freshest, the longest? And I'll give you a hint, it's inside the fridge. All right, Greg says in the door. Sandy says top shelf. Any other guesses for where the milk should go? No more guesses, you guys? They, no one wants to be wrong now. They were all guessing me wrong. <laughs> Sharetta says not in the door and Lee says middle shelf fridge. Okay, let's bring this milk in and see where it goes. Okay, I put the milk right in the middle and it should be pushed all the way to the back. It needs to be in the coldest part of the refrigerator. 
So it could be on the top shelf too, as, as long as your freezer is on the top. But if your freezer is on the side, you want it to be in the middle and all pushed all the way to the back. And the door is the place the milk is going to go bad the fastest because that gets opened and that's the, the warmest part of the fridge. And Greg said, just drink it swiftly. <laughs> and Sandy says, I win. <laughs> Good job, you guys. So this is just a little game to show you kind of where things are placed and also test your knowledge because everything is not intuitive. Now, I don't think we were taught this stuff in school. And so I, I'm giving you the resources to find this out. So for everything you buy, it's listed on that A through Z <laughs> um, tool on the website. I'll show you at the end. So that's storage. That was the fun one. Prep is um, kind of like the nerdy one. That's what you think about for all the food preppers that buy all their food on a Sunday and chop everything and get it ready for, you know, their lunches for the week. And that was, you know, pre-COVID times when we were all leaving our homes for the week and we wanted to be able to just grab and go our lunches. So food prep is taking a little bit of a different perspective right now because we want to prep our food, not just so we can grab it and go, because hopefully we're not going anywhere very often, but so that we can make it easy for us to make it. So studies by the EPA show that if you pre-cut your veggies um, and pre-marinate your meat or pre-set up your food a day or two in advance, you're 80% more likely to cook that food. Because I don't know about you, but sometimes the reason why I just make peanut butter and jelly for dinner or order takeout is because I'm just too darn tired at the end of the day and I don't want to deal with all the cooking and dishes. So smart prep. We have a picture of this label and there's more about prep on our website, eatsmartwasteless.com slash prep. And I think you can download this label. Of course, you can create your own out of just a piece of masking tape. And you want to put on the label what the item is, when you made it, when you should eat it by, make your best guess, and when you should freeze it by, make your best guess. That way it doesn't get lost in your fridge and then it gets bad and you're like, what was this anyways? Is it even edible? So make sure you label your food when you prep it. That is one more way to prevent food waste. All right, smart saving. A lot of you said, I eat all the food that I get when we took that poll. So that's what this is. This is just eating all the food that you get. And, um, we have a picture of this little eat this first sticker on a container in the fridge and that you can you can download that sticker too but you can make your own you can just put this on a, a little box or basket in your fridge so that when you or your kids or your partner or your roommates open the refrigerator you see that leftover pizza the half cut avocado melon the leftovers from two nights ago things that need to be eaten right away another thing that we like to do in our house is have a leftover night so we did that last night. I was going to cook and I opened the fridge and things were falling out. And I was like, I'm not going to cook another meal. So I just put more food in this fridge for another leftover night. So last night you had your choice of a cheese quesadilla or a grilled cheese sandwich and all the leftovers in the fridge were put out. So there was Chinese food, there's leftover pasta, salad, random avocados and watermelon. And it was just like this big buffet and everybody got to have whatever they wanted. So leftover night is a really, really good option. And then we have our picture of a soup. And a lot of you chose that you make soups, smoothies, and casseroles. Great way to reduce food waste. So you can look in your fridge one night when you know that you got some veggies that are wilting and go, okay, what do I need to eat? I know I have this zucchini. I know I have this kale and this chicken that I got to make. I'm going to Google a recipe and Pinterest will give you thousands of options for those three ingredients. All you have to do is, you know, try to um, make shift if you don't have ingredients and just play it from there. There's just a million recipes. I love Pinterest for that. Um, the other part of saving is freezing. So when your food is getting to the end of its life, maybe the leftovers have been in the fridge for a couple of days, but you know they're still good, but you're not going to get to them because you're sick of them. Like me, when you eat leftovers three days in a row, but you know that will come in handy in a week or in a month when you need that food for lunch, freeze it. When your grapes are getting to the end of its life and it's a whole bag of grapes and you know the kids and you aren't going to eat them, freeze them. They make great smoothies. Same with all your berries and most of your veggies. So obviously you can't make a salad from frozen veggies, but they make great smoothies and soups.
So freezing is another really great way to use smart saving. I'm gonna check my polls. I forget if I have another question for you guys. Nope. Okay, almost done with these solutions, you guys, and then we're gonna open it up for some questions. So the last solution is called Get Smart, otherwise known as measure your, measure your food waste. So most people don't think they actually waste much food. Um, as you're listening, you might be realizing different ways you do waste food on accident. Like, oh my gosh, I totally do that. Or even thinking of that tomato that's in your fridge as we speak that you need to eat before it goes bad. I challenge you to measure your food or give this to your kids as a science experiment because they're at home anyways. They need something to do. Gosh knows my kids need something to do. So you can weigh the food waste bit by bit. There's a little picture of a, um, a volume container there. Let me go back. Um, or you can take the volume and you can measure it for a week or two or three or four or whatever you want. This data is for you. If you want to share it with me, I would love it, of course. And then the other, and Greg says, separating your food scraps for composting also helps you see how much you're wasting. Good reminder. So if you do compost, like say you live in Portland or you home compost at, food, at home, um, you get to see what your food waste habits are. You start seeing like, oh, we're, we're throwing away a lot of bread into the compost or there's a lot of, um, you know, this type of produce going into the compost. So you start to realize what your family isn't eating and maybe get a glimpse of why. So measuring your food waste in some way actually really helps reduce because it just puts it in your face what's really happening. And the second part of Get Smart is to join the Eat Smart Waste Less Challenge. That's going to be my only pitch to you guys is to go to this website eatsmartwasteless.com and take the challenge. This is going to ask you for your email address and send you five emails, maybe six because you get one welcome and one goodbye. But it's interactive and it's four weeks of how to prevent food waste in your home. It asks you questions, sends you recipes, sends you to different websites, shows you videos. So I encourage you all to take the challenge now and answer the questions and let me know what you think about it. I'm going to give you all my contact info at the end here. Here are some benefits of taking the Eat Smart Waste Less Challenge. You will definitely save money. You'll definitely protect the environment and our communities. You might develop healthier eating habits if you're eating all that produce, and you'll definitely waste less in your home. And I think for times like these, it's important to point out that you will go to the grocery store less often if you're wasting less food. Okay, here's a little fun um, tip science experiment I did in my kitchen window and I wanted to share with y'all. So if you go to this website, ruralsprout.com slash regrow vegetables, they're going to show you um, how to regrow anything from like celery to onions to lettuce, green onions, maybe carrots. I forget what else. There's a few herbs and vegetables that you can regrow in a bowl of water like this and then transplant to dirt. So you can see my little lettuce cutting on day two, sitting in this bowl, and you can see like the tiny sprout, and then the couple leaves on day six, and then the other day on day 12, I've got almost a full salad growing in my window now. So if you do this with all the ends of your lettuce, imagine how much food you could be producing just at home. And I really love if any of you do this experiment, go to this website first and then send me your pictures. I would just love, love, love to see how you're using this method. All right, I think it's really important to point out that a lot of our friends and family right now are hurting financially because of the COVID crisis and more people right now are accessing food security in the region than ever before in history of our, our three counties. So the city of Gresham has put together a pretty good list of food access resources and that's on greshamorgan.gov slash COVID-19. It's okay to ask for help and it's definitely okay to pass these resources on to someone you know who needs help, or if you're in a position to give, check out these resources too. And I'm happy to answer any questions about that as well. So as we are answering questions, I'm going to um, minimize this and show you guys some resources. And then um, I'm just gonna open it up for questions too. Let me go to my panelist thing. And I think I can allow you all 
to talk or unmute you all. Let me figure that out. Participants. All right. I'm going to unmute you all and let you chime in if you want. If you'd prefer to type, feel free to type. Um, and if you're trying to talk and I don't hear you, click your mute or raise your hand. Oh, looks like you, most of you are still muted. So if you're trying to talk, make sure you unmute. I don't have the ability to unmute you. Please share any questions you have, either verbally or um, by chat. Here is the Eat Smart Waste Less website, you guys. Can you all see this? Yes. Okay, so when you enter that website, you're gonna get your choice of English or Spanish, and then you'll see all those resources I was talking about. So you can take the challenge right there, and then all those different categories of resources. Um, also, here's that food storage guide I talked about. You can look at- I think we're still looking at the end of the presentation. At least I don't see the, the website. I don't see Eat Smart Waste Less. What about my attendees? Do you see the um, savethefood.com website? It's on the last slide of your presentation in PowerPoint. Okay, let me change my share screen. Got to go into Zoom controls and share the right screen. Okay, do you see the savethefood.com now? Yes. Yes. Yay, thanks for helping you guys. So this is that A through Z storage guide I was mentioning. It is very complete. Um, yeah, anything you want to store, <laughs> you can find it. So that is one of my favorite tools. Here's that regrow veggie scraps site I mentioned. Here's their celery and their cabbage and their basil that they're regrowing. And those were the main resources I shared. I think that's all I have, Emily, unless you want to add something and then I just want to open it up um, if there's any questions. You all will get a follow-up email in about seven days. We're going to, we recorded this, so um, we're going to figure out how to put that somewhere, I think YouTube. And so when that's up and live, I'll send you all the link in a follow-up email. Awesome. And I think that's about all I had as well. Thanks so much, everyone, for attending and listening to what we had to say. And thank you guys so much for participating. It's so much more um, fun when attendees ask questions and participate. And I know it can be a little weird when we're not, um, you know, face to face. And so it, it's really nice to just have that ability that you guys um, were doing to just help out chime in.